And here's to Toby, fielding all the <laughs> last minute edits and, yeah, and all of the names. So Abby is here, Abigail McGuckin, um, to share with us this morning. And Abigail is a daughter of Epworth. <laughs> And we are blessed um, to hear this morning um, how the word um, of God um, has been sent out through her and how she's responding. And so this is a moment to celebrate in all of our callings as a family together. This is a moment to celebrate in the ministry of Epworth that helped grow Abigail to this moment. And then now how she has grown to a moment where she has a word of truth to help grow us. And so in celebration of all of this blessing back and forth and mutuality one to another. Thank you for being here to share your story and your call. Thanks. Hi. <laughs> I'm going to pray for us real quick to start it off. Um, Heavenly Father, I just come to you humble before you, God, that you would let the words that I speak today, God, be yours but not my own. God, that you would calm my heart and open the hearts of everyone here in this sanctuary. God, that you would just allow your word and your response to be clear today, God. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Okay, so if you know me, you know I'm not very good with my words when I just lose script it. So I'm going to stick to this because it is a little bit more eloquently put. <laughs> um, so my decision to go to Australia, even though I didn't know it at the time, actually started when I was on summer mission to Botswana, which was two years ago. I went for five weeks and we were serving on a college campus, going out onto the campus asking people what they believed about Christ. The culture and the environment on my Botswana summer mission was incredible. The people we were talking with were always super excited to sit down and hear the gospel. They would skip class to sit down and talk with you for two to three hours. You don't really see that a lot nowadays. Their religious environment there ranged from people who were Christians but didn't have an intimate day-to-day -day relationship with the Lord to people who believed in sacrifices to different deities. Along with my American teammates that I went with, who were my constant community encouraging me towards God and leaves of faith, I really felt that God was saying to me that I should come back and do the year of long internship here. Stint, uh, so crew has a thing called stint, which means short-term international mission. And so coming off of Botswana, I was like, okay, this is clearly where I'm supposed to go. I loved the people. I loved the environment. And I had felt God calling me to a year-long full-time mission for a while and was convinced that, of course, Botswana was where he was desiring my heart to be. During that mission, I had a teammate who was always talking about Australia, which was weird because we were in Botswana. I was like, Don't, we're here. Why, why are we talking about Australia? Um, but he was always just talking about his love for the people and how he was so excited to go there once he had graduated um, to do the stint year. And he said something to us that said, Australia has a need for laborers. And that really stuck out to me, but at the same time it was like, okay, that's, that's awesome that you know where the Lord is calling you after college, but I think I'm supposed to go back to Botswana. So over the past two years, that's what I had said to everyone in my life. But what I didn't tell people was that Australia was starting to pop up all over my life, but I was completely ignoring it. <laughs> From random things about Australia on my social news feed, or a prayer in church, or friends going there on mission and coming back and sharing their experiences. Looking back now, I can see that it was God trying to show me that I was supposed to be there instead of Botswana. Throughout all that, I was being stubborn because I had my heart set on Botswana because I already knew that I loved it. Why should I change that plan now for a place that I had never even heard of, never even had an experience with? At this past winter conference, which is an annual gathering of students involved with the campus ministry crew, um, it's close to two to 3,000 students where they just have sessions of sermons and worship and breakout sessions for different countries we're partnered with. I had already been to the Botswana breakout multiple times because I had been there on mission, but and I knew what the country, its need for the gospel was. And so I decided I would go check out the Australia breakout because, you know, why not learn more about how God is moving in another country? But even going into the session, I was still, my heart was still set on Botswana. I was like, no, I'm going back to Botswana. There's no way I'm going to Australia. Like, this isn't happening. <laughs> um, so the speaker began to talk about the atmosphere in Australia and how the people are incredibly loving 
incredibly loving and outgoing. And if you know anything about who I am, it's those words that define me. I try to be as caring and as loving to others as I can through God, and I am a very outgoing person. <laughs> I felt connected already. And then she began to speak of, on the Australian religious atmosphere. In a nutshell, there is none. The fastest growing religion in Australia, as in most of the world, is no religion. They have a very apathetic attitude towards the gospel, and they don't see it as something relevant to how they live their lives. Um, I'm going to do something right now that they did at this breakout session. I would ask you all to stand up for me, if you can. So she asked us a series of questions, and this is really where God was immediately saying there is a need in Australia. So if you knew about Christianity growing up, stay standing. If you have a friend who's a Christian, stay standing. If you have access to a church, stay standing. If you have access to a Bible study, stay standing. And then she said to us, in Australia, there'd be next to nobody standing at this point. If you were raised in the church like I was, that was really shocking for me because I've never not known an environment surrounded by loving people who would constantly encourage me towards the gospel. This place has been my home for as long as I can remember. You guys can sit down now. <laughs> um, so I don't know if that made an impact on you, but for me, that really broke my heart because when I first went to college, uh, the first two years of my faith in college, I didn't have a solid community besides crew. I was going to the events, but I wasn't hanging out with friends on the weekend who were going to constantly encourage me and point me back to Jesus Christ. It wasn't until my junior year that God had finally placed that community in my life, and I saw my faith take off because it was surrounded by loving people who were loving me how God had intended, not how the world intends love to be sometimes. So God had created us to be in a community centered around him and not to be alone. And we aren't to take this gift for granted because clearly in Australia, community is very lacking. So this was where God was saying to me, you know what a community after my heart looks like. You have a loving, outgoing attitude towards people. I need you to go and be the person who shares Christianity with them. Be their friend that loves that shows my love through your actions. Be the church, be the Bible study leader, be what I need you to be. I don't know if it's up on the screen or not, but 1 Corinthians 9.22, is it or is it not? That's fine if it's not, okay. Um, says, to the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might have some. This verse says that when Jesus came, he became what the people needed him to be. He didn't come dressed as the king that they were expecting, robed in gold and purple and everything that they were anticipating, but he became a humble carpenter that they could relate to, and he ultimately became the ultimate sacrifice for us. This was what God was saying to me. I'm not supposed to go in there thinking that I have the answer and the problem, or the solution to all their problems, but simply go in there being what God needs me to be, not who I am, but who he intended me to be. So this, in this call, God was saying how he was going to use me, but I also heard how he was going to grow me. When I was looking at going to Botswana, it was because it was familiar. It was easy. It was comfortable. It was already known to me. I knew what the end result would be. It didn't present a challenge or a leap of faith for me to go back there as much as I still love the country and see their need for the gospel. God was saying, in calling you to Australia, I am going to be putting you in a culture that is the complete opposite of what you grew up with. There will not be a steady communion community. You will need to help create it. This will be hard. This will be unfamiliar. This will be a new culture. This will make you uncomfortable. Acts 1, 8 states, but you will receive power when the Holy, Spirit, the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and in Samaria to the ends of the earth. 
When I first read this verse, I saw receiving the power of the Holy Spirit, and I was comforted in that, because there's no way I could go to Australia on my own and be able to do what he intended me to do without his Holy Spirit. But when I looked at it again, I saw how it was calling us to the uncomfortable. We start where we are comfortable in Jerusalem, a.k.a. America, to go to Samaria, which if you look at it in the context of this scripture, during Samaria was a place that people would travel around multiple days to avoid this town. And so Samaria was kind of my Botswana. It was a new foreign environment. To the ends of the earth, a.k.a. Melbourne, Australia, a city. I grew up in the country. I'm not a city person. <laughs> a low Christian community. I've been constantly surrounded by a Christian community. An attitude of sarcasm. I'm not a very sarcastic person. I don't understand sarcasm. <laughs> and a completely new culture. God's reach is so much further than we do on our own, so God calls us to the uncomfortable ends of the earth, but with him right by our sides. When we take the easy route, easy route that we know the end result, we are not fully relying upon God to provide and grow us in his, our reliance upon him. When you are placed in uncomfortable situations, we are forced to take leaps of faith and fully rely upon God to provide. It is nothing that we can do on our own to make these things happen. Only God can do this. So Acts 15, 1 through 11, which we heard earlier. I'm going to pull it up on my phone because I didn't print it out, but I have it right up, I promise. <laughs> um, it talks about how the churches had come together to decide whether they were going to start inviting Gentiles into hearing the gospel. Um, this was an uncomfortable situation for them. Kate and I were talking about this, and I hadn't seen this originally, so that's where partnering with people works. Um, if the Jews hadn't originally decided to share the gospel with the Gentiles who didn't know the gospel, where would we be right now? Would we know who Jesus Christ was? It was because of their first steps back then that they decided that sharing the gospel and doing the uncomfortable things would lead to the growth of the church and the growth of people knowing who Jesus Christ was. This is why I am going to Australia. Because God showed me that he moves in uncomfortable ways in our lives. He isn't going to move in me going back to Botswana where I knew the end result, but he was going to move in sending me to Australia, which I am terrified and excited about going in the same time. He is going to stretch and grow me in my love and reliance upon him in this uncomfortable path. Going back to nine, Matthew 9.37, this was the verse that uh, the woman who spoke at the Australia breakout reminded us of. It said, Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out the laborers into his harvest. This is something I want to encourage you guys to do right now that they encouraged me to do. Um, they said, set an alarm at 9.37, Matthew 9.37, either in the morning or at night, to take time and pray for where the harvest is in the world, but there are laborers needed there. Um, you can either take time to do that now or after the service to set that alarm. This alarm constantly reminds me, even on times, maybe I'm in bed already at 9.37, or maybe I'm hanging out with friends, or maybe I'm watching a TV show. This alarm constantly reminds me that there is a harvest out there, but there are so few laborers that are willing to hear the call and be uncomfortable to go out into this foreign, uncomfortable environment. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's essentially how God called me to Australia and why I am going in general. And I asked Kate if I could also do this as well. So. Some, a lot of you have already met with me and you've heard how God has incredibly challenged my life um, in going to Australia. And the coolest thing about Crew as a campus ministry is that they invite people to partner with you in this vision, that God doesn't want one person going, but he wants it to be, again, a community of people being part of God's vision and his kingdom in this other country. So if you've met with me, you know that this summer, I don't leave until January and I'll be there for a full year. During this whole summer and hopefully at the end of August, I am raising 
up, God is raising up partners with me to partner with me through either financial support or through prayer support. Um, so something I wanted to invite all of you to do is I wanted to invite you to be uncomfortable with me, to invite you to be uncomfortable in this vision that God has given me for his kingdom over here. Usually financial partnership can look like anything from $20 a month to $10 a month to $100 a month, however the Lord calls. I am so excited about this process of partnering with people because it allows me to recreate that relationship that I've had with so many of you when I was young, running around as a crazy child. You remember, you remember me then. <laughs> um, and it allows me to develop a relationship with people where I can also care and love for them as God intended, that I can pray for them and pray for what's going on in their lives, and they can also be praying with me and praying for what's going on in my life. So again, it has been really amazing to be able to share this with you guys, share where I've been. I guess four years ago, I've been at four years, I've been at college and been away and to come back and see where God was saying, Abigail, like, this is where I'm calling you now and I'm calling you back to your church to invite them to partner with you as well. Um, I do have a box in the back if you feel called to give me a one-time check or um, I will also have a computer downstairs if you feel called to set up an online monthly donation or time gift. Ooh, hello. <laughs> Um, but for right now, I'm going to pray for us again, and then I think Kate's going to come back. Father God, I thank you so much um, for this community, God, that we sometimes often take so much for granted, God, that we don't see that when we are hurting or when we are struggling with sin, we can go to this community around us and say, I need help. I need your prayers. I need your encouragement through God's love and God's word. God, I pray that you would allow us in this community to fully rely upon you, God, to be uncomfortable and to use this community also, God, as a way of going to the uncomfortable places that are right here in Cockeysville, in Towson, in Hunt Valley. God, that you would show us that you are Lord and creator over everything, God, that you are not just in this church, God, but you are on the streets, you are in our homes, you are at our workplace. God, how are we to love those around us as you intended us to love those around us? God, I thank you so much again for this time where you allowed me to be bold in sharing my calling of why you intended me to go to Australia, God. And I thank you so much for the openness of this church, my home, to be able to hear that calling as well. And I thank you and pray all this in your son's name. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> thank you so much, Abby. Abby has shared her commitment to go to the uncomfortable and has challenged us to do the same in giving God room to grow, to join her and her journey um, and also for her journey to remind us as we are all standing up knowing the support of a community of love, what it is like for others who do not have that. Not just in Australia, but here um, in Cockeysville and in our area as well. And so we come to the communion table um, with that call and with the receiving of that reckless love in our hearts and in our minds. 